Welcome to the familiarization of your MEPET Automated External Defibrillator. This film will go through three sections. First, how to set up your MEPET. Second, how to use your MEPET. Third, how to regularly check your MEPET. This section will show you how to unpack your MEPET and ensure it is ready for use. After you have removed your MEPET out of its box, the first thing to check is that the electrode pad lead is pre-connected to the front and the electrode pads are firmly in the pad storage compartment on the back of the MEPET. Next, insert the battery pack into the side of the MEPET in the direction of the arrow on the label. Push it firmly until you hear it click into place. The MEPET AED will now go through a series of self-tests. Follow the prompts and press the flashing buttons when told to do so. Once this process is completed, the MEPET will turn off. Check the unit status window to confirm that the MEPET is now ready for use. This window should show three key things. One, a status indicator. Two, a full battery indicator, three, a full pads indicator. How to fully check your AED will be discussed later in this film. The ME pad can now be placed inside the carry case. Gently pull the edge of the electrode pads through the slot on the side of the back so that the pull tab is visible. Every year, between 100,000 and 150,000 people in Germany experience sudden cardiac death. This means one death every five minutes. This section will familiarize you with how the ME pad works when used. To use the ME pad first, press the green on button. A green light next to the pads connect will illuminate to show if the electric pads are properly connected. If that light is flashing, please check that the pads are correctly connected to the unit. If the light is constantly lit, the pad connection is good. The ME pad will then give you visual and audible prompts on what to do. Follow these instructions. The ME pad will prompt you to remove the pads and place the pads as shown on the pictures. Should you place the pads at a pace faster than the voice prompts, then the ME pad will catch up with you. The ME pad will then prompt you to ensure that no one is touching the patient. If the shock is advised, the ME pad will charge to a predetermined level and advise you to once again check everyone is standing clear and then to press the flashing orange shock button. The ME pad will then prompt to begin CPR. This includes a metronome for compression rate and a verbal command for when to breathe for the patient. If you choose not to press the flashing blue eye button, the ME pad will verbally tell you how long until reanalyzes. This will be repeated at regular intervals. The ME pad will also detect if CPR has been performed. Depending on what is detected, it would instruct either to begin CPR or encourage you to continue CPR. Always continue CPR until either the patient wakes up or the ME pad prompts you to stop so it can reanalyze. This is usually every two minutes. At times a patient's heart may not require a shock. In this instance, the ME pad will state. In these circumstances, it is impossible to accidentally administer a shock. If the patient is showing no signs of life, you should immediately start CPR. Once again, the ME pad will say for help for CPR, press the flashing blue eye button. The survival rate of heart attack patients is 5 to 10 percent. Studies show that up to 70 percent of victims could survive if an automated external defibrillator AED were available. This ME pad features a unique built in ambient noise detector. This will automatically adjust the volume of the ME pad depending on the surrounding noise to a maximum 90 decibels. Was the majority of cardiac arrest on casualties who are of adult age 
and the incidents of cardiac arrest in children are rare, they are on the increase. The ME pad has a feature that allows to be used on children should the need arise. There is no need to change the pads, simply lift the cover and slide the switch on the front of the AED to select child mode. The ME pad is a robust AED that holds a water resistance rating of IP55 and it has passed drop tests to all sides and corners from 1.2 meters. If you have to use your ME pad, it is always important to inform the attending ambulance staff of how long you have been doing CPR and how many shocks you have given. This is easily done with ME pad by turning the ME pad off and then holding down the blue I button for more than one second. The ME pad will immediately tell you how long it was turned on for and how many shocks it has given. The ME pad will also collect and store key information during an event. It will record up to three hour per event and it will store the last five events. The stored data can be transferred to a SD card and can be sent to the manufacturer for analysis. Finally, the ME pad can be updated should your local resuscitation guidelines and protocols change in the future. Some upgrades can be done by the SD card and other can be done by the connection of the AED to a computer. Should this be required, technical support of Medical Econet GmbH will offer you full assistance. The MAD pad performs a daily, weekly and monthly self-test. However, it is still important to visually check your AED on a regular basis. This is done simply by looking at the unit status window which is visible through the carrying case. This window shows three key things. First, a status indicator. Second, a battery indicator. And third, a PADS indicator. First, the status indicator will indicate if the ME pad is working correctly. It does this by carrying out daily, weekly and monthly self-tests. If all the tests are passed successfully, the indicator will show a circle. If a problem has been found, the indicator will change to show a cross and I button will flash red. Press the flashing red I button and ME pad will verbally tell you more about the issue. For assistance, please contact your supplier or the Medical Econet GmbH technical support line. Secondly, the battery status indicator will inform you of how much battery power remains in the normally chargeable battery. When installed, the battery has enough power to sit on standby for five years. When the battery indicator is at one bar, a new battery should be ordered. When the battery indicator changes from one bar to no bars, the battery should be replaced at the earliest opportunity. Thirdly, the PADS indicator tells you if the PADS are connected to the ME pad and whether they are in date. If the PADS indicator is full, the PADS are in date. If the PADS indicator is showing as half full, the PADS will expire within three months. New PADS should be ordered. If the PADS indicator is empty, then the PADS are out of date and they should be replaced at the earliest opportunity. Every minute that passes without the patient undergoing a defibrillation shock means a reduction in survival by about 10%. Early defibrillation can save a person's life. Help them. You can do no wrong. We hope that you found this familiarization film useful. This is not meant as a replacement for hands-on training. Additional advice and after-sale support is available from approved MEPET distributors and at our website at www.medical-econet.com.